The key to efficient operation of push-pull scrapers is teamwork. For each operator must depend on the other to get his full rated load. Each must develop the right timing, speed, and coordination for an easy hookup in the cut. Each must know how to transfer smoothly from pushing to being pulled. And each must know how and when to unhook the loaded scrapers without undue loss of momentum. Teamwork is the mark of a skilled operator. To help you develop the necessary skills, here are some operating tips on cat push-pull scrapers. Before you put one of these push-pull units to work, make sure it's in good working order, not only for your sake, but for your fellow operators as well. So, before startup, inspect the machine for leaks. Look for tire damage and wear. Check the cutting edge and router bit. Look under the rear engine for leaks. Inspect the hydraulic oil level and the level of the crankcase oil. Examine the air filter indicator and check the radiator when cool. After startup of both engines, but before moving the machine, make sure the controls are in good working order. Check the gauges to see if they're in safe operating range, warning lights operation, and the bale up. Check the steering. and make sure the brakes are working properly. Your operator's manual can give you additional details. For now, let's concentrate on operating techniques, particularly in the cut, where teamwork really counts. We'll cover one operator at a time, since responsibilities do differ somewhat. Say you're operating the lead unit. Remember, for push-pull loading, the cut should be kept as level as possible, long and straight. And both machines should always be on the same grade when loading and unhooking. Now, let's take a typical push-pull cycle. To begin with, you can control both front and rear engines by positioning your foot as you see here. You'll want to load in the direction of the fill if possible. So when you make your turn, you can, by simply rocking your foot, slack off on the rear engine while still maintaining power to the tractor. On any tandem power unit, applying power to the rear engine can create side thrust on the tractor and something like this might happen. So ease up on that rear engine when making sharp turns, crossing ditches, or turning on slopes. To continue, as you let the engines slow down, the transmission will downshift automatically one step at a time to second gear, the normal loading range. As you enter the cut, lock down the cushion hitch and let up on both engine throttles. Lower the bowl and adjust the apron. You can now apply the transmission hold pedal to prevent upshifting and the differential lock to equalize rim pull but don't turn the machine with the differential locked and be sure both machines are straight before hookup. Take a shallow cut. Digging too deeply can stop the scraper and delay the hookup. So go into the cut gradually at partial throttle until the second scraper makes contact. As pushing begins, apply more of your own power to cut deeper. Keep the power constant, but avoid excessive wheel slip, and maintain uniform depth of cut. At the end of your loading cycle, raise the bowl and close the apron. To make the transfer smoother, maintain constant engine speed. Your partner will begin loading where you left off. As you pull the trailing unit, continue at a fixed speed. 
until at the end of your partner's loading cycle, you see him veer to your left. This indicates he has cleared the bale. At this point, release the transmission hold and differential lock. The transmission will upshift to selected speed as you head toward the fill. Now, let's suppose you are operating the rear unit. Upon entering the cut, lock down the cushion hitch, lower the bowl to about four inches above the ground, and approach the lead scraper at a controlled rate of speed. Your job is to match your speed to the front unit. So first, ease off on the rear engine, letting it idle until you make contact. As you slow down, the transmission will downshift automatically. When you do make contact, start lowering the bale over the hook so the rear unit won't slide off the push block and cause damage. When your speed matches the front scrapers, engage both the transmission hole and differential lock. To minimize wheel slip, match your engine speed to tractive conditions. Once loading is underway, you can adjust your apron opening and lower the bowl so it just skims the ground. Meanwhile, spillage over the sides will tell you the front scraper is almost loaded. As your partner finishes loading, you'll feel a surge in ground speed. Ease off the throttle and steer into the hook. That is, steer slightly to the right so the bale can slide gently to the end of the hook. To repeat, lay the bale gently against the hook. Meanwhile, you have already lowered your bowl, so now you can begin loading at the same depth as the front unit, leaving a long, continuous cut. Since you are being pulled by a loaded scraper, you should have no trouble getting a full load more quickly. So back off the rear engine throttle about a quarter. Remember too, your traction will improve as the load in the bowl gets heavier. While loading is underway, put the bale control in the raise position. The bale will remain down so long as it is in contact with the hook and the front unit does not slow down for any reason. At the end of your loading cycle, feather out of the cut and release the differential lock and transmission hold so you can speed up enough to let the bale swing up from the hook. Slow down to let your partner pull ahead. This will give you room to veer to the left. Head for the haul road with cushion hitch engaged and differential unlocked. On the haul road, Try to reach travel speed quickly. For safety, however, the two scrapers should not travel too closely behind one another. Carry the bowl low for stability. On downhill grades, use the hydraulic retarder, if so equipped, to control your speed. Climbing normal adverse grades should be easy with all-wheel drive. But for steeper grades, here's a tip. As you approach the grade, disengage the cushion hitch to improve traction and lock up the differential to equalize rim pull and avoid wheel slip. On the fill, the dumping procedure is much the same as with conventional scrapers, like leaving the cushion hitch engaged unless dumping to a specified grade, engaging the transmission hold to maintain fixed dumping speed, and dumping in uniform lifts. In soft going, the rear engine will provide added tractive effort. So will engaging the differential lock. But if you should get stuck, your partner can help you out of trouble. Note that he is pulling rather than pushing and is doing so with a loaded scraper. After dumping on the fill, raise the bowl, 
lower the apron, return the ejector to its original position. Release the transmission hold and differential lock if engaged and activate the cushion hitch. If you have to travel on a dusty haul road, it's a good practice to close the apron completely. It helps keep dust from flowing through the bowl and entering the rear engine air intake. When parking or shutting down, be sure to disengage the cushion hitch and drop the bowl and apron before setting the parking brake and lowering the bale. After the recommended cool down period, stop both engines. Turn off the disconnect switch and remove the key. Operating push-pull tractor scrapers calls for considerable teamwork. And teamwork is a matter of timing and the right speed for an easy hookup, smooth transition from push to pull, and unhooking without notable loss of momentum. Finally, teamwork also involves watching out for the other guy. In short, teamwork is as important as the machines themselves and is the key to efficiency, especially where push-pull scrapers are concerned. 